Good morning and a blessed Christmas morning to you as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, it is wonderful to have you here with us uh, and we are sad that we can't all be together uh, but we understand the, the nature of the times and so our hearts go out to each one of you uh, wherever you are and we pray that you are safe, that you enjoy some family time and if you are far away from family today, that the Lord will be close to you as well as to your family and draw you close in spirit. Shall we pray as we uh, light the candles? Uh, there are a number of them, so shall we pray. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Christmas Story. Joseph um, and Mary were engaged and they were going to get married. One night, Mary went to sleep in her room and an angel named Gabriel came and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, and told Mary that she was going to have, that God chose her for this mission well, yeah, and um, she is going to have a baby boy named Jesus. And then Mary says, I'm not going to have a baby. I'm only a teenager and I'm not married yet. Then Gabriel went to tell Joseph, Mary is not lying. She is going to have a baby. Then a king wanted to count all of the people in the world. So everyone had, or in the country, so everyone had to be sent to their home countries. And Joseph, Joseph's, Joseph's um, home country was Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph rode on a donkey to Bethlehem to be counted. But there was no room in the inn. They knocked on each door. They could not find a place to give birth. So one man told them, you can go and give birth by my place. And they said, oh, please, I really want to. He pointed the way and they followed. Packed baby Jesus up and put him in a manger. And a whole bunch of angels came wait, wait. Um, and then shepherds were looking for their sheep when a whole bunch of angels came and told them to go tell everyone that a new baby king is born. The angels were singing. And so the um, shepherds started running with excitement to look for the new baby boy. Three wise men riding on their camels saw a star and they followed it. They packed special gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and they go to see him. And phew! I don't know how you would survive in that barn. It's too stinky, too crowded, and Mary said, Thank you for coming. One of the shepherds said, He's adorable. And the new baby is going to change the world. A 
our readings come from Isaiah and then from the book of Luke. And so I read Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Our second reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. It's entitled, The Birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would be taken, should be taken, of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Thanks be to the Lord for his word to us today. I've tried to approach Christmas this year with the view that my heart needs to be open, my, 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 my heart receptive and my ears open uh, to what God is saying to me today about the Christ story, about the birth of Christ. Because the story itself doesn't change. The story of Jesus' birth doesn't ever change. It's not, these are the days of our manger. The story itself goes from year to year to year. What changes is me and my perspective, me and my experiences, me and where my heart is at. And so I encourage you, as I have been praying, that Lord, you would show me afresh what this story, what this message is telling me. So in the last week, I looked at Joseph and I looked at his role in the birth of Christ and the fulfillment of God's prophecies. Precision planning is what God is involved in. And Joseph was part of that plan. Today, I want to speak about Mary. And I want to also speak about some ladies in the lineage of Jesus and their role in the story and what God might be asking of us today. Firstly, there are 1,426 names in the Bible, names of people in the Bible. Only 111 of those are women's names. So it's quite rare to have women's names written in the Word of God. Mary of Nazareth is one of the most mentioned names, which means she is an exceptional woman. She is just another person that God created, just like you and I. But the fact that she carried the Christ child and raised him does mean that she is a special person. So put yourself in the shoes of the mother of God. The song lyrics from the song uh, Pentatonix have made famous, Mary, did you know, ring in my ears. Mary, did you know that the baby boy, that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know the child that you delivered will soon deliver you? Stunning. Mary, did you know that the child you would give birth to would be the Messiah, would be the wonderful counselor? the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, where the government on your shoulders, on his shoulders, would never end, and the peace on his shoulders would never end. It's interesting 
to note that the accounts of Jesus' birth in the book of Matthew deals with the genealogy of Joseph, so Joseph's lineage, the descendants of Joseph. The genealogy found in Luke deals with Mary's genealogy, slightly different names along the way. And in Matthew's gospel, there are four names of women that played a role or became part of the line of David that then bore children that became heirs of David's kingdom. Now, there are, of course, other women involved in all the other births and all the other children, but it's interesting to note that these four were part of this whole uh, setup, all of the, uh, were part of the genealogy of Christ. So I want you to, to bear in mind that we're speaking about Mary and we're speaking about the birth of her child. So keep that in mind and, and we're going to come back to that. For now, I just want to look at these four ladies and the stories that their lives represent. So the names of these four ladies are Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and the widow of Uriah, who is also known as Bathsheba. There's actually a picture that depicts these four ladies, these four kind of scandalous ladies, because they have scandalous stories attached to them, but yet are remarkable women. And so there's this picture that has them wearing crowns. If you're anything like me, I had to remind myself who, who some of these names were. So let's just recap uh, who they were. Tamar's story is complicated. She, she's the sort of ancestor that many wouldn't admit to having as part of their genealogy. Pretending to be a prostitute, Tamar slept with a family member. And well, it gets complicated and it gets messy. So we won't go too much further into that story. But there's a lot of mess attached to it. Secondly, Rahab was a Canaanite woman. In other words, she was a Gentile. And she was a prostitute. But she helped hide Jewish spies. And thereafter, uh, acknowledged God as her Lord and was grafted into the, the Jewish line. So Tamar, who, who kind of had the scandalous side of, of acting like a prostitute, Rahab, who was a prostitute and a Gentile, being grafted into the Jewish line. Thirdly, there was Ruth. Ruth wasn't really involved in a sexual scandal, but she came from a people who were. Ruth was a Moabite, and Moabite women were known to be the enemy. They were the ones who led Israel astray. The Jewish men fell for the Moabite woman. So the temperance, the temptresses were the Moabite woman. But Ruth was a lady of faith who came out of that line, out of that people group, and who led people to God. In fact, her words were, your God will be my God, your people will be my people. And she served Naomi incredibly well. Bathsheba was a victim to the desires and the lust of a king. She had trauma in her life and yet was used by God. She even lost one of her children, but God still redeemed her. And of course, we can't look at those four women and not look at Mary and the story around her uh, pregnancy and her life. Mary is the unwed mother who bears an illegitimate child. She would bear the shame and disgrace in the eyes of people for her whole life. People who didn't really understand, who didn't believe the story that she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. No, God is the father. Can you imagine that? The neighbor's going, why does she talk about Joseph like that? No, she just doesn't want to admit. So it was scandalous to the people around her. But God, through all of this, chooses to use people, and in this particular instance, women, who can be faithful and obedient to God and serve out his purposes, regardless of the mess that they're coming from. At least Mary got to see Jesus and the culmination of years of prophecies. 
So the, the, when the song says, Mary, did you know, she knew to an extent. She knew because there'd been these prophecies, because shepherds came and, and magi brought gifts. So Mary knew to an extent. But through her whole life, and, and even as she stood at the cross of Jesus, as he hung on the cross, there, there was the sense that she knew that her son was God. But if we look at the stories of Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba, they didn't have the joy and the privilege of knowing that they were part of the story, that the children that they gave birth to and the lineage that, and the legacy that they are part of would actually give birth to the Christ child, to the one who fulfilled all the prophecies, the wonderful counselor, the everlasting God. They weren't part of that. And so one, one speaker actually says that maybe the song should say, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, did you know that the child that you gave birth to would one day be the Lord of all the nations? Now, you might be wondering why I'm speaking about ladies and, and you might be thinking, there's the feminist going again. It's got nothing to do with feminism. It's got nothing to do with just speaking about women. There's something here about giving birth. And these women, because only women give birth, these women give birth to something greater than themselves. There's something about birth that God uses through scripture to teach others, to, to create legacies. There's something about birth. And so the fact that Mary gives birth to Jesus is significant. Jesus could have come to this earth in any range of ways. Jesus could have just been uh, on a chariot of fire and the angels bringing him in all his majesty and all his glory. But God chose to be born. So God uses birth as a lesson here. We celebrate today the birth of Christ. I believe the significance in that and what God might be challenging us on today is are we carrying the Messiah in us as Mary carried? There's a song that Nicole Nordman wrote. It's called Be Born in Me. Here's some words from that song. I'll hold you in the beginning. You will hold me in the end. Every moment in the middle. Make my heart your Bethlehem. Be born in me. Friends, our challenge today is, are we carrying the Messiah in us? Are we giving birth to God in us? Are we allowing God to develop and grow in us? All analogies fall short at some stage, but the question remains, are we allowing God to be born in us? Are we, are we living our lives knowing that we have the Messiah in us? Are you going to allow the Christ child, the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, fully God, are you going to give birth to him in your own life? Are we going to see an evidence of Christ's life out of, coming out of you? May we remember that we carry the Messiah within us as Christ followers today. And may we carry the Messiah well. May we honor him as we carry the Messiah in us. And today, may God be born in us. Amen. Shall we pray together? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. Lord, you are the living God to us. As we celebrate, as we reflect on the birth of Christ, May you challenge in every heart here today that we would be carrying the Messiah in us 
and realize that you want to be born in us, that our lives are your Bethlehem. Our lives are your manger, seeing the Christ child grow and develop. As we celebrate today, as we move into ending off this year and starting a new year, may we look and seek to, to honor you with our lives. We commit ourselves into your hands. Thank you that you would choose us to carry the Messiah in us and allow us to give birth to something bigger than us, something that is beyond us, regardless of our pasts, regardless of where we've come from. You want to use us. You're part of, we're part of your story. We thank you for this. In the most wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.